What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about three different topics regarding some horror updates here in this video here today. Two will be official things. One is going to be a rumor regarding Scream 7. It's going to be about Friday the 13th for the other one. And then the last one will be leprechaun and finally an update on the movie that we now know is actually going to be coming the next entry in that franchise now just to kick it off with friday the 13th this is coming from GameSpot, but it's going as i it says iconic horror composer harry man fred fredini has revealed that he's working on a new as yet unannounced friday the 13th game that is unrelated to gun media's asymmetrical multiplayer horror title man fredini revealed the news to rely on horror in a recent interview he revealed that the new video game project he's working on is completely separate to 2017's asymmetrical multiplayer horror title Friday the 13th the game. The new unannounced game is being developed by a different studio and will feature more realistic looking characters. He also mentioned that the game would be done in a different style to Friday the 13th the game. Presumably, I'm presuming he's referring to the uh, multiplayer gameplay again. And I would assume that this could mean we'll have a better campaign mode along with an even more superior multiplayer option. I love the 2017 game that we got, so I'm excited to see what the future holds here. I actually do still play that game on PlayStation, but I know a lot of people, myself included, once that lawsuit started impacting the game, I fell out of love with it. I stopped playing it. I still revisit it time to time. And I think recently it was announced that the licenses that Gun Media or Gun Interactive, I think they go by now, has is expiring by the end of this year then the servers as a whole should be shut down as late as next december i could be mistaken with that but i'm excited to see what the new friday the 13th game can present to us i'm excited about the future of the friday the 13th franchise as a whole because we now have a prequel show we have a supposed reboot on the way and now we have another video game on the way so all in all this could be a very hot time to be a jason fan if everything goes according to schedule and if everything goes over very well in return we don't get a lot of crapola now jumping into the scream 7 room i want to discuss scream 7 apparently will not happen without jenna ortega and this is just one of the latest rumors about the project shout out to beyond the mask and if you haven't already go check out their video from today regarding this topic now the person who shared this with them is anonymous but claiming to be an insider and predicts that an official announcement for scream 7 might happen closer to the physical media release Again, it's just a prediction. They're not saying it is. They're just predicting. Jenna Ortega, we know, is gearing up for an even bigger role on Wednesday Season 2. Jasmine Savoy Brown, we know, is also rumored to be contractually obligated to do Yellow Jacket Season 3 before Scream 7. So that's another hurdle that should ensure that Paramount and Spyglass are waiting for everyone's schedules to be cleared. Because I'm assuming that Jasmine should be filming Yellow Jacket as, as soon as this fall. Jenna should be filming Wednesday as soon as this fall, maybe early 2024. And with both of those two stars tied up and then with the rumored contractual obligations that Jasmine has to Yellow Jackets, that should be enough to ensure that they will wait because you already have Radio Silence and Melissa Barrera reuniting to work on a completely different project for Universal that's not even related to Scream. Now, the more and more I actually think about it, just to go over Jenna once more, with this big as she is getting and how much star power she's gaining and how much bigger i'm sure she will become after wednesday season two i'm starting to really settle on the idea of letting jenna be our mega star opening kill for scream 7 we already have a mega star that's continuing to grow in popularity and in success that many people like to say oh well, who's going to be our big opening our big star opening kill this time around i think that we should just let it be jenna ortega you can do an entire opening sequence that is presented to us as Sam being in danger to make us think Melissa Barrera will be dying in the opening, but then we get a surprise when it's revealed that the killer lured Sam away from her house so that Tara would be left alone for an accomplice to strike, and when Sam realizes this, she rushes back home, but it's too late, and Tara, of course, will not be making it out of this opening alive this time around. She will be dying, and we can see Sam process this throughout the movie, use it to kind of form... A narrative around Sam about is she or is she saying that Tara's death make her snap. I've touched on this countless times. I just think there's something about Jenna Ortega that utilizing her as the opening kill for this generation could be one of the most shocking things to have happen if you execute it correctly. And what I mean is don't frame it in the same way that we have for Scream 5 because she was already in an opening. I think the bait and switch approach could be better let us think that melissa barrera's character of sam carpenter is in danger hell you could even throw in 
Christina Carpenter into the opening. Ghostface could literally taunt and harass and chase these two women during the opening, only for them to be only for them to find out that it was all just for them to be lured away from the house. And the real person who's our opening kill, who's gonna have an off-screen attack, will be Tara when they come home, find her throat slashed, let's say, and then Scream 7 will play out from there with us seeing how Sam is coping with the loss of Tara and of course the return of Ghostface, who will return maybe a year after the opening attack of Kara, of Tara being killed, if they wanna go, go that route. I just think that's how it should be done, a bait, a bait and switch approach, if Jenna is the one that they decide to go with as an opening kill. Now, diving into the last topic here, Leprechaun. The Leprechaun franchise is gonna be moving forward with this supposed re reimagining that we were first told would be coming courtesy of Bloody Disgusting who told us that Lionsgate was actively taking pictures. It would appear they've settled on one because an update to this scoop has come out today from the Hollywood Reporter. Lionsgate has now hired director Felipe Vargas or Vargas to reimagine the Leprechaun franchise. Mike Van wrote the screenplay Roy Lee who is associated with Barbarian is producing through Vertigo Entertainment the Hollywood Reporter is also noting unfortunately I say that Warwick Davis is not expected to reprise the role Lionsgate said this in an official statement 30 years after its debut this franchise still cast a spell and we're thrilled to be bringing it back with a new vision Aaron Westerman president of production for Lionsgate Motion Pictures Group said this in a statement Roy and Mary are two of our most trusted producers, especially with this genre, and we're excited by Felipe's vision for the film as a director. In his hands, this movie should be very scary and a ton of fun. Now, is this movie already dead on arrival for a lot of diehard fans like myself? The absence of Warwick Davis, once again, it's like a here we go again. You already had this with the Hornswoggle one. Uh, the individual, I can't think of his name right now, who did Leprechaun Returns. Well, I think he did a fine job I know a lot of people coming out of Leprechaun Returns were like, if we get another one, please bring back Warwick. Warwick had also at one point many years ago stated he didn't want to do any more horror movies because of his kids. Uh, but he didn't say he wouldn't return at, if they were to be older. But maybe Warwick just doesn't want to do horror anymore. I see the reactions already. Oh, hey, well, why are they doing this if Warwick isn't going to come back? I mean, the report says he's not expected back. It doesn't say he's not officially coming back. And also him being reported as not expected back doesn't mean that they did not try. I fully believe and I trust that they did try. Warwick has already made comments that he didn't want to do horror movies, though, before in the past. That's why I tend to think that I hope anyway they did try and maybe he just doesn't want to do it. Or maybe as of now, he just isn't expected to be back, but they are going to try even harder to get him back. We'll just have to wait and see. But you guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and members of video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.